Well, hello, Internet. Today I'm going to show you how to do countless numbers of different things, but most importantly, I'm going to show you how to make a vertical menu system like you see right here that you can use on a WordPress site or any other type of website. I'm also going to show you a ton of things you can do with jQuery that I haven't covered in the past and at the same time continue to make additional tools for our WordPress sites and websites in general. Remember, this doesn't have to just be done with WordPress. Now, what I'm talking about here is if you go under Appearance and then click on widgets inside of WordPress and you drag over one of these pages widgets and drop it in there. This is what is ultimately going to show up on the page. It's a div, ULs, LIs, and a whole bunch of anchor tags. Now, of course, you can copy this format and this all that I'm going to talk about here is going to work on any other website, which is going to be really great. Well, if you do that, this is how all this information is going to appear on the screen. So my job in this tutorial is to take this and turn it into this. All of the code is available in a link underneath this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up here into the style section. Basically all I have here is the div and all the other contained information that's going to go into a menu system that's built for you by default in WordPress. And I'm going to go into my style type text forward slash CSS area and I'm going to start defining some things here with what you see on the left side of the screen and we can watch how it's changing. Now I'm just going to copy this guy right here because I'm going to be making most of my changes with him and it's a class so I'm going to start it off with a dot and then I want to target the UL that surrounds everything which is going to be sidebar menu as you can see right here so this is what i'm going to be making some changes to first off okay so i want its margin to be zero so i'm going to put that in there padding to be zero so that it doesn't mess with anything that surrounds it list style type is going to be none because i want to get rid of those bullets and fonts i'm just going to use a real basic bold 13 pixels and Arial. of course you can have this be whatever you want and as we go through this you're going to see that this is very easy to change and let's say we want to make it 180 pixels and we file save it reload and here you see it's just a list i got rid of all of the bullets and lined up everything in a row which is good now what i'm going to do is come in here and specifically start styling the anchor tags that lie deep down inside of this and so that you can see this a little bit better what i'm going to do is i'm going to open it up okay so on the left side of the screen you see all the code and you're going to be able to easily tell what I am going to be styling. So whenever I style art block content body ULLIAA then it's going to be art block content body which is right here and then UL which is the second line and then LI and A. Here is the anchor tag that I'm going to be styling. All right so I'm going to leave that open just so I can use it as a guide. Now what I'm going to want to do is display this as blocks and that's just going to allow me to position that anchor tag the way that I want it to. Then you have to put overflow auto. Don't really worry about this. This is a, an Internet Explorer issue, so don't really worry about it. Then you got color white. That's my text color. Text decoration. I want to put none inside of there. Get rid of those highlights. Padding. I'm going to put six pixels so that it's nicely centered inside of there. And border bottom. I'm going to put one pixels. If you have any questions leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them and then I'm going to do pretty much the same thing border right so copy it leave everything else the same and you can see that the text totally disappeared and the reason why is because of this guy right here color white I changed everything to white so if I want everything to reappear let's open this back up again we can use this as a guide now what I got to do is come in here and start defining the default backgrounds for all of my menu items so let's copy this guy again and then what I want to style. Well, I want to style the UL li a for any links. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, copy, and then I'm going to change this from link to visited. And then after that, I'm going to change it to active. Get rid of that guy right there and then start defining my CSS code. This is going to be real simple. I'm just going to say background image. And this is how you put an image inside of a menu. I get asked that question all the time. Just sticking it in the background. Images, and I have an image called horizontal menu item, and that's going to be the background, that right like that, and then close off that. Now you can see everything's being listed out right there. Now what we got to do is come in here and define the background whenever somebody is hovering over one of these guys. See, nothing is showing up right now. So I'm just going to copy this here. Let's scroll it up. Be doing lots of copy and then paste in here, and we're going to change this to hover. So we're going to change the background on the button whenever the mouse hovers over it. Let's save ourselves some time. Come in here, grab this guy, and let's change this to horizontal menu hover. 
which is the name of an image. It's a little bit different. And then let's say I want to change my color to black. Reload. And now you can see when I roll over these images that they are all being highlighted. Just these couple little silly changes making some pretty dramatic changes. All right, well now I gotta do some styling on my sub-level menu items. And you're not even gonna see those right here, but so what we're gonna do, copy art content body, again, the div that surrounds everything. Then I'm gonna go UL, LI, UL. So what am I doing here? If I go art content body, well, that's the div that surrounds everything where it's here. Then we got UL, that's sidebar menu. Then we got LI. Well, that's not gonna style that, but it is gonna style this guy right here. Here's the UL. This is the child element, the pop out for the menu. So we're gonna style that guy. So what are we gonna do? Come over here. And I'm going to position it absolutely on the screen. It's going to be a position based off of the document itself. Then I'm going to say width. I'm going to find the width as 180 pixels, just like above. And top, I'm going to leave at zero. That's the distance from the top of the screen. And that's not going to matter because I'm then going to go in here and go visibility. And I'm going to say hidden. What does that mean? That means it's going to delete off the screen. You're not going to be able to see it. And as you can see, it just did. So now what I got to do with jQuery code is make those guys pop back up whenever you roll over these. So that is it. That's all the CSS code you need. And that's because jQuery is extremely powerful. Basically, when I come in here, in the script area and I'm going to define that this code is going to run whenever jQuery is loaded or whenever the document is loaded I mean so this in essence says when the document is ready for me to do stuff with I want this function right here to run and to end my jQuery I gotta close off this little curly brace close off that bracket and then put a semicolon then I can start writing some code. My first function is gonna trigger when the mouse hovers over a main menu item. Whenever I put my mouse on here, instead of just highlighting like it's doing right now, it's actually gonna make a pop-up come out here. And again, I'm gonna pull up the actual code to make this a little bit easier to work with. All right, so what am I gonna do? What I need to do basically here is look for an LI item, which is going to be this guy right here is an example of an LI item. And here is another example of an LI item, a list item. Okay, well, what I want to do is I want to search for a list item that has a UL inside of it. If it has a UL inside of it, that means I need to create a new menu. In this situation, there is no UL inside of it. See, opening list tag and closing list tag. So I'm definitely not going to make this pop out a menu because there's nothing to display. All right, so I got to specifically come in here and target that. Well, in jQuery, I want to come in here and go side bar menu li. A. And what I'm doing here is I'm targeting the anchor tags inside of this UL sidebar menu right there. And then I'm targeting the LI that exists inside of it and then the A. Right? That's going to give me all the anchors that lie inside of LI items. Well, I don't want those. I want the LI item itself. So I'm going to say parent and it's going to get me the parent element for the anchor tag, which is LI. You can see that right there. I'm going to say I want the parent that has, this is another jQuery code, a UL inside of it. And then on mouse over, I want to run a function. So whenever the mouse cursor goes over top of this guy, we're going to run ourselves a function. Pretty easy to understand. Then I'm going to use a function called offset. And what this does is it returns the top and left relative positions on the dock for this LI up here. So it's going to tell me how far from the top of the document this LI is, and at the same time, how far from the left side of the screen. So this is easy. I'm going to create a function called tag offset, and it's going to be equal to, and I'm going to say this. See, I'm covering all kinds of stuff with jQuery. This is a reference to to li. So I'm going to say I want the offset values for that li tag. And something that I'm not going to use here but might be useful because I use this a lot myself. Let's say you want to know what tag this is currently targeting. Well, it's really easy. You just create a variable called get tag name and then you're going to type in this. And this is used just to make sure that you're actually targeting the right tags with your jQuery code. And then you type in tag name like I did right there. Let's see what it is. You could do something like an alert get tag name or something and shoot that on, on the screen. So that's a useful sort of little piece of code you probably may want to use. So then I want to get the distance from the left for this li item. So I'm going to say offset left is equal to, and I'm going to say tag off set dot left, and that's going to give me that guy. And I'm going to say offset top is going to be equal to, and I'm going to say tag offset, and tag offset comes from right here. So I'm going to say tag offset top instead. 
Now I know exactly where that guy's being positioned. And the reason why that's important is I want to be able to properly place my menu on the screen. So like this guy right here is, see? It's, I want to properly put this menu where it says about me and contact me in the right place based off of where this guy is. So I'm finding out how far from the top and how, how far from the left this guy is. And then I'm going to position this based off of that information. Hopefully that makes sense. Then I want to move the new pop up. 100 pixels to the right side of the screen. And I'm doing that because the first pop-up menu is 180 pixels wide. So pop out offset left is equal to, and it's just gonna be this guy plus 180. Easy enough. Then I wanna get the ID for the first UL contained in the LI. So the first UL, and that's gonna be this guy right here. So I wanna grab this information, that's what I'm shooting for. Now I do that is I'm gonna say close parent is equal to, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna use closest, it's in essence gonna give me the first one that it finds, closest UL, and I want the attribute to be the ID, that's what I want returned. And the reason why this is important you might not understand, let's jump over here again. All right, now if we look at what I got here on the screen, here you see about me and see how it opens up this third window? Well, I need to treat those situations when there is a third item to open differently. And that's the reason why I'm trying to get the ID for this UL, so that I can properly position based off of it's a first, this is a first menu item, this is a second menu item, this is a third menu item over here where I live. So I want to use the attribute ID for the UL to figure out if I'm going to be making a second level menu or a third level menu. And as I make this, you're going to see it. So I'm going to say if close parent is equal to sidebar menu being the UL that's going to surround everything. Then what I want to do is go this and I want to find an unordered list and I want to specifically find the first unordered list and I want to change some CSS code inside of it. For one, I want to make it visible. So to set my visibility back, put a colon inside of there to visible. And then I want to set left to be equal to, and I'm just going to go pop out offset left. I'm going to copy that guy, paste that inside of there, and then follow that off with pixels inside of quotes. And another comma, and I also want to position it from the top. So I'm going to say offset top. And then I want to position it from the top also distance from the top of the document and put a colon inside of there and go off set top plus and then pixels and then close that off close that off put a semicolon all right now what i'm going to do is say else and in this situation i'm going to be making my css changes to the third menu item and not the second menu item so i'm going to be making changes to this guy over here and, and not this guy right here well i need to find the offset for the ul that surrounds the third level pop-up i'm going to call this second offset is equal to and i'm still going to say this and remember this is a reference to whatever had the mouse go over top of it. And then I'm gonna say find UL. And in this situation, I wanna find the last UL. And it's gonna be the last one because it's gonna be a third pop-up, third level pop-up. And I wanna find the parent that surrounds that guy to get the offset values for it. Then we're gonna do exactly what we just did. It's just gonna change just a little bit. So I'm gonna say second offset top is gonna to be equal to, and I'm gonna say second offset dot top minus offset. And this is going to give me the distance from the top of the document. And I have to get rid of this information, like the offset top for this specific guy right here, and subtract it to get my stuff to line up properly. Like you can see, it's lining up properly right there. Let's scroll this up so we can see a little bit better. And it's easier to understand this if you actually have the code in front of you. And then I'm going to go second off set left is equal to, and I'm going to get the distance from the left side of the screen. And it's just going to be off set left minus 10 and then i'm pretty much doing exactly the same thing so i'm going to actually copy this just a couple little changes here and there now that i got all my new offsets all set up and running right right after this i'm going to paste into there that and then in this situation under left i'm going to say second offset left so let's just copy that second offset left right there paste it in and then offset top is going to be second offset top so let's just copy that and paste that in there and then i have to close off the whole entire function which is going to end up being like this i'm not done yet and jump over here and reload this guy and you can see that this is all 
all popping out here, which is great, except when I put my mouse off of it, it's still there, which is causing a catastrophe. So let's fix that. Well, that's not a problem. I just need to come in here and define what should happen whenever the cursor goes outside of the menu item. So I'm actually going to use this guy up here. I'm going to copy it, scroll back down, because pretty much everything's going to be the same. And in this situation, everything's going to be the same. This is going to be the same. I'm just going to change this to mouse out. Then what I'm going to do is actually highlight this guy up here and just copy it to that point right there because I just want to set my visibility back to none. And there's no reason to code that out if I don't have to. So instead of visible for visibility, this is going to be hidden. And then close off the curly brackets and that bracket and that bracket. Put a semicolon in there and file save it and see if I did the right things. Reload. Oh, it didn't come up and I know why. The reason why is I need to close off this bracket right here. So I like that. I'll say reload and now you can see that not only is the menu bar opening the way that it should it's also closing the way that it should so I hope that it helps you answer a ton of different questions I'm actually gonna be using this in a new WordPress theme that's gonna be coming up next leave any questions or comments below otherwise till next time